Corey Cruz. How you been? Thank you all for coming tonight. Thank you so much. Thank you guys. Good to see you all tonight. I love yeah. yeah. Perfect. How are you, Jay? Very good. Thank good. you very much for coming tonight. Oh, we really appreciate it. Absolutely. So um, I wanted to ask a, a couple of questions about your beginnings, your start, because yeah. I think I think you have a very interesting background. I have read quite a bit about it. I've known you for a while, but yep. I know when you were a child, you've talked a little bit about how you were overweight and that there were a couple of life-changing events for you and your family that sort of put you in this direction of spending your life inspiring people with health and fitness. Can you tell us a little bit about oh, that? Oh, absolutely. For me, really, it, it started with um, my family because for me, my dad, when I was 18, Jay, he was diagnosed with prostate cancer and I've talked about it in all my books. And when you have something like that happen to your family, even if you're a teenager, and I was 18 at the time, it's scary, you know? And they told my dad that he had one year to live and if, you know, make, make your plans, get ready, because this is it. And it, cancer's a scary word, even today it is, you know? And so that really planted a seed in me that got me to think about well, what is important in life, you know? And I thought, you know, your health is everything. If you don't have health, you're bankrupt. I don't care how much money you have or if you have great relationships, the love of your life, doesn't matter if you don't have health. Would you all agree, guys? Yeah. Right? So that's why we're here tonight. So that was my start. And you know, there's always, I always tell people, Jay, there's always a silver lining in everything. And with my dad, it's that. And luckily today, 30 years later, Mel is my dad. He is alive and well, and he's 85. He just celebrated his 85th birthday. So, so they, they told powerful. him one year to live, and yeah. he actually lived uh, 30, 30 years. extra years. And he's still cooking, you know? And he changed his diet. I'm going to share with you guys tonight a little bit of the diet that I'm talking about, but a very similar plant-based diet that really healed his body. It was powerful. And you have your own personal story. As a kid, you were yeah. overweight as well, right? Well, you know, I guess, yeah, if we're going to get into that, sure. I was a chubby <laughs> kid. I grew up in a Mexican-American family, you know, with a name like Jorge. Jorge. How many Spanish speakers do we have here tonight? ¿Quién habla español? Bienvenidos. Very good. In español. Very welcome, everyone. But being in a Latin family, you know what Latin people like to do? They love to eat, especially if they're happy. But even if they're sad, and if they're depressed, and if they're angry, so my grandmother raised me, her name was Maria, and bless her heart, I have good genes, but she lived to be 102. She passed away just four years ago. And she raised me, but she raised me with food being, I mean, how many people can relate that food was a reward or comfort, right? And we all tend to go to that, you know? So for me, as a young kid, food was everything, you know? And I have two sons. I have an, uh, my partner Sam and I, we have an 11-year-old son and a 9-year-old son. And seeing them, I don't know, for me, I, I feel like I've, I feel really blessed that maybe why I'm doing what I'm doing now is now having an impact on the next generation. Because we can make a change in our lives, but it's so cool, guys, if you can share what you've learned with others, right? I mean, and, sure. and that's why I do what I do, so. So... I also think your big breakthrough was really interesting. You were a trainer in San Diego. Yes, and still live there. Is it, is it correct that Oprah heard one of your podcasts and then... Yes, yes. Boom. I mean, this is yeah. a long time ago. Um, I mean, I didn't even have a book. I, you know, I've written a few now. And uh, this is like 1998. I got a call from the Oprah Winfrey Show, and she really launched my career. I'm really blessed to, her, to, to have been so lucky. And I've maintained the relationship. She's had me in O Magazine many times, I think five times. She had me once as the centerfold in O. I was the tear out. <laughs> Very chic, you know. I missed that issue. <laughs> <laughs> my centerfold days, right, with Oprah. But uh, regardless, she really taught me something very powerful. And I, you know, I was so nervous, Jay. Oh, I could tell you guys a story. I was just shaking. I was 24. You're meeting Oprah, and this is a 19, what did well, I say, 1998? First you got the call, though. Well, the, Oprah the call, call scared show. me out, yeah, of course. Be... But then I had 24 hours to produce a FedEx that had to go overnight, and I was living, my family lives in San Diego in Ramona. It's near Julian. It's in the country. It's, it's a suburb, we'll say. It was an hour to get to the nearest FedEx station. So we had a hustle. I had two hours to hustle. And I was not a celebrity fitness trainer then. I hadn't worked with anyone. I was working as a trainer at a simple gym in La Jolla, which is a nice area of San Diego, of course. But I was working with regular clients. I had started to do some speaking events. And this thing called the internet, they say, was invented. So I was like, what is this internet thing? And back then, you know, there wasn't even, like, I don't know. I mean, there was Apple, thank goodness. But, and I had Apple. I was the biggest Apple person. Oh, I never told you this, what I did in college. I'll tell you later. I was a student rep for Apple. It's how I paved my way through school. It was the, one of my best experiences. But regardless, what were we talking about, Jay? <laughs> what were we talking about? No, we were saying something very deep. The, the first time going on the show. 
Oh, with Oprah. Yeah, Who's said Oprah? on the show. Oprah, Oprah. Don't forget Oprah. No, I love Oprah. No, how can we forget her? No, and she told, oh, the lesson. She gave me the most important lesson that I would share with all of you if you want to make New Year's resolutions work or you just want to do something that you've not been able to do in a long time. She said, Jorge, I'm never going to meet you again, probably. I said, oh, okay. She's like, but I'm going to give you a peek. Because we're sitting just like this, literally waiting for a commercial break to finish with the full audience, just like here. And you know, what do you do? It's kind of like awkward. You have to say something. So she's like, so you're in San Diego? And I was like, yes. And she's like, is it George or Jorge? I said, Jorge. She's like, okay. And I said, Oprah, give me one piece of advice. She said, here it is. Keep it simple. And she says, if you write a book, and you should write a book someday. She's like, you know, books are important. They change people's lives. They say, keep it simple, whatever your message is. And you know, I didn't know at that time that I would turn this into a career where as an author now, I've written 25 books, Jay. But I've always made it, my passion is to make things simple for my clients, you know? And I work with so many celebrities from, you know, people that are in films to television to, uh, to actresses that are, you know, on webisodes. I mean, I've worked with everyone, to housewives, you know, to everything, you know. So there's a variety of beautiful people out there that need help because everyone needs help. But the trick to helping everyone and helping ourselves this, and my, my invitation to all of us here tonight, is to make whatever you decide to do this year simple when it comes to fitness and nutrition. And that was Oprah's gem. It was so powerful. Because then, because I was, I had a program once, Jay, that had 20 steps to, you know, to get fit. And she's like, no, 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 one, two, three, too many. Keep it simple. Simplicity is everything, you know. So that for me was my greatest thing. And so when I try to share a new, a new concept or a new diet or I have a new cookbook, I really try to keep everything so even my kids could get it, you know, an 11-year-old could get it. Well, so prior to her giving you this lesson, you had not written a book. You've written Nothing. 25 since no. then. You take no. the lesson of keep it simple. And had a podcast, like you said. That was yeah. it. So what's interesting about nutrition, and yeah. the space that you really specialize in, yes. is in that period of time, there's a different message every six months. You focus different you know? messages in your books yeah. to give people something to think about, a sure. way to think about their, sure. their diet and nutrition. Um, what have you learned over the years in the books that you've written? Because even what you've written about has evolved. Yeah, if you guys want to take note, Tony Robbins taught me something years ago. He wrote the introduction to my first book uh, called Eight Minutes in the Morning. It was a workout plan. And he says, write down, if you write down something, you remember it better. So if you guys are going to write down one thing, this is the thing to write down for tonight's talk, at least from my perspective. All calories count. Very powerful, three words, all calories count. Because when it comes to health, whether it's heart disease, in my opinion, to losing weight, to just fitting into a wedding dress, you know, whatever that is for you, whatever your goal is, you've got to understand that you've got to really do something that you can do long term, and that is understanding that calories, what we eat and how we move, determines how we look and how we feel. And I think in this world, I, I just did a, a book signing last night at Barnes & Noble at Union Square, and we had a huge audience there. And I had one lady who hadn't had breakfast in 20 years. She was scared to eat, and she wanted to lose like 80 pounds. And she's like, but won't like the master cleanse diet work, or can I just eat popcorn, or can I just have grapefruit? And, and you know, I told her, well, you can, you can do all that, sure, but you want to eat things that you enjoy, hopefully, so it's delicious. But you just have to understand it's monitoring your caloric intake. If you can create a cal calorie deficit, you'll lose weight. And when you're lighter and thinner, you're going to feel better. You're going to have more energy. And, you know, and my whole concept of this book, which we'll talk about, I'm sure, later, is about keeping it simple. It really is. And you don't have to do crazy things to see results. And if you can count calories, guys, that makes sense. I mean, do you all agree? Yes, guys? Hello? Yes, good morning, everyone. <laughs> no, it's true, guys, because we all have been told that, but we've always hear around this time of the year, if you watch the Today Show, that there are negative calories. There, there's this, there's magical things, and there are ways to create uh, shortcuts, if you will. I've written a few books that people have said were gimmicky, but I really think if you keep it simple and you understand the calories are everything, then you can do everything, because how many people are very good at math or at least good enough to add and subtract? That's all you need to be healthy is addition and subtraction. That's it. So when we spoke at the end of last year, yeah. I remember I got a chance to preview the book. And yes. speaking of tiny and full, yes, there you um, go. what I thought was really bold about the book, I'm a vegetarian, which some people think that's already a little cuckoo. But right <laughs> on the, right on the t front, discover why um, only eating a vegan breakfast will help keep you tiny and full for life. And so the concept in the book is really about 
incorporating veganism, which for a lot of people, it's a radical word, right? It scares them away. Oh. But your approach well, I'm is not really a vegan. about... Yeah, I'm going to exactly, say it right yeah. now. I'm not a vegan, guys. And, you know, what happened when I developed this new book, it's called Tiny and Full. It's on the bestseller list. It's on iBooks, which I'm very proud of. I have it on here, of course, on my big, my beautiful iPad. But regardless, the key concept is understanding that if you're a vegan, you're probably following the most efficient way to eat the less amount of calories. You really are, and vegetarians are as well. And you're, you've always, have you always been vegetarian? No, a long time ago. Yeah. yeah, because I did paleo for a little bit and I've done other things as well. But understanding that if you can just keep your diet really focused in on plant-based foods in the morning, if you can be a vegan until lunch, that's all you need to do. And that means plant-based. Now, vegan foods that are out there, I mean, as exciting as this is, I know for my kids it is, you know, my nine-year-old loves Doritos, and he gets them when he's with his mom <laughs> at their house. And so, um, and I, I get them on occasion as a treat, but you know, those kind of foods are vegan, and eating Dorito chips, I hate to say it, isn't probably the best thing, because it takes just eight to nine chips to equal 100 calories. And you can eat like 25 beautiful strawberries for 100 calories too. So when I teach people that it's not just being a vegan, it's eating plant-based foods. And just until lunch, then at lunch you can cheat. You can literally be normal and you're free to do what you wanna do so you can eat the foods that you love, whether it's pizza or burgers or cheese or even honey. Because what? vegans normally can't eat any of that. And you know, I was just with Steve Harvey uh, a few weeks, just a week before the Miss Universe event. You heard about that. How many people heard about that, right? I love Steve Harvey, and I have to, he asked me to mention this, so if you don't mind, tomorrow I'm on his show. We're doing a whole diet war, it's called, because we're trying to debunk all this. So it'll be on national TV. I'll be here in New York, but it, it will air from Chicago tomorrow. And it's this idea that if you can really understand that your calories are everything, and if you can eat a diet that has you know, the lower amount of calories, but where you're not hungry, that's what the full part means in the book. It's having a full plate that you can enjoy and feeling full, not stuffed, but I mean the worst, the, the one number one saboteur, and I don't care if it's an A-lister or a mom with two kids or some business executive I'm working with, it's they just absolutely, they really just don't have that time to waste, you know, Jay? So if you can keep things simple and eat foods that are gonna be filling, but low calories, then you really technically don't have to count calories. Although we do it all for them in the book, you know. Sure. So. I mean, I think one of the things that's interesting about doing it for breakfast is, or in the morning, sure. is you'll probably be more full even through lunch, and it carries over, and it also makes you think about it at least once a day. It becomes well, a bit of a ritual, so it does. You start it? to enjoy it, you incorporate it into more of your meals, and it's it's sort of a way to get started off of you know the right foot. Oh, and there's no question. I mean, these the, I'm working with five people. I'll give you a little sneak peek story for tomorrow's Steve Harvey show because it's national. It's really exciting. There's a, a different trainer, another celebrity trainer that the other five people. So we have five people that I'm working with and five on the other side. And I told them, guys, is what, it like a throwdown? It is. Oh. It's like a fitness face-off. You know, it's really kind of like a competition, and it's for two months. So you'll be able to follow it nationwide for two months. So I'm really honored to have been a part of this, and I've trained Steve, and I'm you know he's got a few people that train him, but I'm one of his team, you know, team Steve Harvey and all that. But the average person in their first week that they did this plan, because we filmed this back before Miss Universe, so we filmed it, how long ago was that, Sam? A month ago. We filmed it a month ago. Um, they lost in their first week, 12, the average. Now, I'm gonna tell you, these people had more weight to lose. They were like, the, the lowest they had was 280 pounds. The highest was like 330. So it was a, they were very heavy people. Were, none of them were over 30, which was shocking. They were all very young millennials, you know? And what happened is they just got busy, you know? They just eat too much, and they work in a company where food is available everywhere, and they just eat mindlessly, right? So the results are powerful. People, I always tell people, technically, you should only be losing two to three pounds of weight a week. That's what's safe. And honestly, a lot of times these people that lose more than that, they're also for the first time eating foods that help cleanse their body of a lot of fiber. Yeah, you have fiber and you have water. And so they are in the bathroom a little bit. But, you know, at the end of the week, you've lost 12 pounds. So it looks good. <laughs> so, so I invite you all tomorrow to, to watch that because it, you'll see what this kind of eating does. So you, you uh, have so much expertise in nutrition. You obviously follow a really good plan yourself. I, I would I imagine some people in the audience would be curious to know if you actually do have a cheat day or sure. a cheat meal or a cheat food. And what is that? Well, so for me... Uh, it, uh, you know, to conquer the night is the hardest time. So Sam and I, if we're with the kids and we have the kids with us, 
will we'll enjoy, and this is kind of an interesting treat at night, but it's only 80 calories, so you can all do this. We get uh, frozen bananas that are sliced and frozen um, strawberries. Now you would think frozen, I mean, what are you gonna do with these things? So blend them and make a smoothie? But you just put them in a bowl and do one cup, 80 calories for one bowl, and it's the most delicious, the, the banana's frozen, how many people have had a frozen banana? They taste like vanilla ice cream, would you all agree? The best treat. So I like to cheat every single night, Jay. <laughs> you are, I think you can't. You can't. Your cheating is healthier than my cheating. Well, <laughs> well, and sometimes was they they make chocolate, dark chocolate dipped uh, bananas. Sam and I will do that as well. So it's super delicious. But for me, after lunch, literally, or starting out lunch, I should say. I eat what I want, you know? And that means if I'm having lunch and I want a chicken Caesar salad, I'll have that. If I want a roasted chicken, I'll have that. If I want fish, I'll have that. Greek yogurt and fruit, I can do it at lunch. I really tell people that the main reason that you want to avoid animal protein in the morning, from my opinion, you know, this is just my perspective, is that you can create more of a, of a detox in the morning if you can be a vegan in the morning. Because your body will, all these impurities from the day and the evening will have accumulated, but they'll be pushed out. And so you'll feel like your energy will be so much better. And you'll probably eat on average at least three to 400 calories less with the vegan breakfast. And that means for lunch, you can eat what you need and you're going to have some more calories banked. And that's all about calories, guys. It really is. It's about knowing that how many calories you eat determines what you look like and your health and your energy. It really is powerful. So one of the things you've always focused on in your books is not just the nutrition side. So in, in this space, many nutrition experts focus only on food. And yes. many fitness experts focus only on fitness. Yeah. And obviously, the best solution is, is understanding both. Yeah. What I think is really great about um, this book and that I found really interesting is you've also done something that not every trainer or nutrition expert does, and that is you've really embraced technology. Oh, obviously, I love it. Apple is... Uh, Big fan of technology. <laughs> and well, so, I'm a fan of Apple. Yeah. I've been in Apple products since college. It sounds like it. You were a oh, I had the said, first yeah. laptop that you guys that Apple ever made. I mean, it was that. Well, maybe it wasn't the first. No, it was. I remember <laughs> it. It was that beige color. Big. It looked like a briefcase. I mean, this You're is a godsend. Yourself, now, those, yes. I am old, but yeah. I'm, I'm 44. So, but you you but, have a um, in the book you have a number of great exercise routines, but you also talk a little bit about a basic philosophy, which yes. we found really interesting because it's yes. very similar to the way we look at yeah um, moving and exercise. Share us a little. Share a little oh yes, bit about yes. That. Well, there there are three things I tell my clients because as a fitness trainer, I really am a fitness trainer. I am, and uh, even though I tell people fitness begins in the kitchen then what do you do after you're done eating? Because you can't eat all day in the kitchen. And even if you're eating vegan in the morning, you have to do something with your life. And I tell everyone, you have to move every day. But then I tell them, and, you know, and I'm just, I, I think I'm really blessed. This is the best thing about being a dad because now I can see from my sons, I can really see that I have to explain things in a way that they get it. And if they get it, all of us will get it. You know, my readers get it. Everyone gets it. And so what I tell them is there's just three things we got to worry about because they're too young to go to a gym and lift weights. They're not even, my oldest is 11. He hasn't gone through puberty, nothing. So, um, so what we do is simple. We have a competition every night to see how we did with activities. So Sam and I will make or, uh, dinner. Well, the kids will be there. And we'll sit down with dinner and we make the topic at the table. So you could do this with your partners, girlfriend, boyfriends, families, at parties, if you know people are tracking their movement. But we all you know, have an unfair advantage because we have an Apple Watch. Even my kids have them. So I'm very, they were very happy. That was kind of what their gifts this last year. Sam has one, I have one. So we all have one. And so what we do is we monitor how many hours we all stand every day. But as I tell them, it starts with one thing. You have to start standing. And what standing does, guys, this is very powerful. I, I should ask you all to stand right now, probably, but I'm not. <laughs> but who knows that if you can stand 10 hours in a day, guess how many calories with doing nothing more than just standing? And it doesn't have to be like necessarily completely focused, like 10 hours uninterrupted standing. It's throughout the day. Every little piece counts, you know? Every little activity counts. But if you can do 10 hours, you can lose up to 300, or you can burn and consume up to 300 more calories. And that's because your lower body is the largest muscles, as we know, in the body, from the gluteus maximus, the quads and hamstrings, the whole lower body. It's your metabolism. And if you're not standing 10 hours a day, guys, you probably have a broken metabolism. How many people feel that their metabolism is shot? 
It's because we sit too much. So stand. 10 hours a day is my goal for all of us, and that's what I tell my kids. So we're all looking, and we pull up our literal, you know, the, the report that the, the activity app does, and we love that activity app. So that's the first thing. So just two more things. The second thing we monitor, Sam and I will do with the kids, we'll ask them, all right, guys, how many steps did you get today? Who got more steps? So we'll monitor that, and there's a little competition for that. Well, I got 10,000, I got 8,000. Oh, I didn't move at all, I got 5,000, 4,000. You know, uh, Sam and I were in Europe this summer in Capri. Sam and I are getting married in July, and we're really excited. But I thought, you know what, it's two weeks, I'm not working with any celebs, I'm gonna eat pasta, I'm gonna have pizza. You know, I'm not a vegan, you know, lunch or dinner, so those things are fine. And I thought I was gonna gain like four, five, 10 pounds. It was my nightmare to come home. I lost eight pounds. And I watched, I looked at my Apple Watch this summer and I walked, Sam and I were in shock that we walked on average in Rome every day, eight, uh, eight miles. So that, I'm like, what? And one day I was like, what happened? We walked 12 miles. I said, where'd we walk for 12 miles? I never well, walked. Well, especially this interesting statistic is compared to San Diego, New Yorkers walk. It's just the only city so where the average here. person walks 10,000 steps a day just by living in the city. So and monitor that, and of course we do that with the Apple Watch. And so the walking, we, we try to get that in. And then the last thing is, all right, activity, brisk activity. Guys. How much brisk activity did you do today? What did you do? Did you play in the playground? Did you throw the ball? Was it dodgeball? Did you play soccer? They're big soccer guys, they love soccer. So it's either, it's usually soccer, you know? And then Sam and I usually hit the gym and we'll do our weights and cardio. So we've got all that. Usually we win that, right, Sam? So we win that always, as we're in the gym. <laughs> A little longer than they're playing, you know, dodgeball or something at, in school. But it makes it fun. And I would suggest you all, like I've told this to every celeb client that I work with, and I never not have my, I'm always tracking how many calories I'm burning because I want to know. I mean, a lot, in today's world, we have the technology to do that. And, you know, my hats are off to you guys and Tim Cook for making this Apple Watch because this thing is killer. I love it. You know, and I, I people ask me like the Today Show is like, can you do a segment, do all the technology stuff? What would win? I'm like, well. Really, you want me to do another segment about the same thing, the same winner? There's no one here that's done better, you know? And so, uh, so yeah, so I love Apple, of course. Well, speaking, <laughs> of, speaking of kids, you, you've, um, you've been very engaged in uh, philanthropy. I know one thing yes. focused on kids. You're also um, um, part of the Clinton Foundation. You yes. do work with them. Can you share with us a little bit about sort of your focus there? Sure, sure. I met President Clinton a few years ago. Um, it was a great event. I had an opportunity to... I was raffled off <laughs> with Mario Batali. I love Mario, you know, he's on the Chew. And we were with Bon Jovi at the Cathedral of the Divine in Harlem. Now I was a little scared because I had never been to Harlem, but it wasn't bad at all. I loved Harlem. And this cathedral, you would think you were in Paris. It was gorgeous. And it was the night Hillary Clinton had her birthday. So it was, it was in October, I think. Her birthday's in October. And so I was there and it wasn't, it was, this was like maybe four and a half years ago. It was the first time I met him. And so we were auctioned off. I was volunteered to be auctioned off to raise money for the Clinton Foundation's initiative on childhood obesity. And I said, absolutely, I'll do that. You know, Mario's doing it too. And they were like, Bon Jovi auctioned something off some performance. It, it was impressive. I was like, this is cool, <laughs> right? So that event was amazing. So from that friendship and from just helping President Clinton, he's invited me to a lot of events. And now I'm really active with him and Rachel Ray, actually. With uh, She has a, a foundation that you guys should all check out called the Yemo Foundation. Fabulous foundation to help kids stay healthy. And I have the Jorge Cruz Foundation, which is designed, you know, what we try to do is, I mean, we don't have a big initiative. We just try to give money wherever it can help people. And, and doing that so kids, because I know what it's like to be a fat kid and be called a little fat ass, you know? And it's not fun. And I was, I mean, being gay doesn't help either. And also, you know, being Mexican didn't help. So you can imagine the nice things people said about me. And, you know, um, it just wasn't a great time back then to do all, to be a Latin, to be gay, and to be fat. I don't think it's still good to be fat, probably. <laughs> but I'm, I'm proud to be gay and I'm proud to be, uh, you know, a Latin, a Latino. You know, and I am happy that I'm proud of my health, you know, because I am, I'm 44, guys, so hopefully I'm doing okay. Am I doing okay, guys? I'm holding it together. I'm not going to take my shirt off. Jay's asked me not to. No. <laughs> but we can all do it, and no matter what our thoughts are, guys, we, this is the year to do it, guys. It's 2016. You've got to do it. This is the year to take your fitness to that next level, and, and you can do it if you keep it simple. I would invite you to check out Tiny and Full. That's an option. You don't have to. I mean, I'm on Instagram and Facebook and everything. But just pick something you're going to do and stick to it. And make sure it's based, hopefully, in some plan that looks at calories. I would say, ask them, I'm, I'm going to try this diet. Well, how many calories do I get to eat a day? And if they tell you, well, it doesn't really matter how many calories you have. It doesn't matter. It's all about... 
eating negative calories. I'm like, you may want to move on, you know? If someone says, you know, it's all about eating popcorn. I mean, that's good. Popcorn is nice at night. I'll have that with Sam sometimes, you know, like a cup or two, because it's very low cal. But if that's your diet, that's not, I don't know how long you can live on popcorn, you know? So you want to have like foods that you can eat that are easy and economical, I would hope, that you don't have to spend an arm and a leg. You shouldn't have to buy things in a box. You should, really shouldn't. You should eat fresh foods as much as you can. And just know that, guys, you, you can do this. You really can. Fitness is not tricky. It's mathematical. Health, think of it as math. And then, I mean, how many people are scared to do addition and subtraction? We can all do that, right? This is not algebra or calculus. It's calories. Count your calories in your set, guys. So you've spent a good portion of your life inspiring others. I'm just I interested. Try. <laughs> this is more of a, a, a personal question. Yeah, who, of course. Who inspires you and who has inspired you through <sighs> your career? For me, you know, I, I'm really blessed because growing up uh, the way I grew up, it wasn't a fun childhood. You know, I really was an unhappy kid and food was my best friend. And that's the truth. And now, you know, for me, you know, probably the person that inspires me the most, and it's kind of funny, but it really is true because I was missing this in my life my whole, my whole, my whole life. Because I, I met my partner, Sam, two years ago, and he's probably the person that I would pick as the one that's going to embarrass you here, Sam. But you have to stand up now, Sam. Stand up so everyone can see and the cameras can see you. But give him a round of applause. He's my inspiration, guys. He has, uh, like, restored my faith in love, which is wonderful because... Uh, straight or gay, I'm sure. How many? It's hard to find the right person, right, guys? I mean, how many people have found the right person? You're very lucky. <laughs> because it's hard. I was looking for many years. And to find someone that is your opposite and to have that balance is everything. And that's my inspiration is stay fit. So he and I can go travel. We're getting married this July weekend, or July, 4th of July weekend in Capri. So we're going to be on the big island of Capri. We're excited about that. And I want to look good in Capri. And I also want to play and climb the rocks and swim in the water. We were there this last summer. So my inspiration is, I don't know, it's Sam, because he really has taught me about love. And I think if we all can have love, they say that's all we need, right, Jay? I mean, I, I kind of like need. the Beatles. So. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So I would love to open up the conversation yes, to all please. of you. We have a couple of people out in the audience with microphones. I, and yeah. um, this is your opportunity to ask amazing nutrition and fitness expert a question you might have. Why don't we uh, start right in the back there? Welcome, welcome. Hi, how are you? Good, good. Um, Tell us your name. Uh, Debbie. Debbie. Um, my question is actually um, to your point about calories. I struggle with counting calories. I feel yes. like it's very overwhelming. Um, usually I'm good with monitoring my food intake and portion control and things of that nature. But when it comes to calorie intake, that's where I struggle. What would you say is a probably easier way to um, manage calorie counting? Well, what I, what I had all my... Oh, that's a great question. Did you guys all hear the question, right? How do you count calories? <laughs> that's a good one. Well, you had to track the ones. There's only two things that cause calories to change in your body, and that's movement or eating. It's pretty basic, so you just have to monitor those two things. The eating part, luckily, you know, I use a great app called MyFitnessPal. They're a good one. Do you have one that you recommend, Jay, to uh, count calories? Pal, lose It, Fujikate, Lose It. So Which other so, one? Yeah, Fujikate, MyFitnessPal, Fujikate. Lose oh, It. Yeah. They, you know, they're designed to make it really simple. To, in some cases, um, you'll just start to tap in generally the food you eat, and yes. because a lot of it's crowdsourced, um, very quickly, the option that's your option pops up. doesn't have to be exactly right. You choose something close, but you don't have to think about it. And what's great is with the health kit infrastructure on iOS, now ac many activity trackers will keep track of your movement. The other app keeps track of your calories and automatically will let you sort of know where you're at without you having to even do the math, which yeah. is great. No, and, and really the, 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 the trickiest thing and the way to solve this though, and this was something that Dr. Oz has taught me for years, was I, I was just on a show last month and uh, Dr. Oz is an amazing doctor. You know, I think he's changed the health of this world so much. He's amazing. He's one of my mentors. He inspires me when it comes to medicine and health and everything. He taught me a very important lesson on air when I was the guest, you know, on camera with him. And he said, Jorge, the most important thing that I've learned is you have to automate your meals when you want to lose weight because most people don't have time to count calories. And that means simply just have the same thing for breakfast. I mean, you know, for me, I have the same thing every day, Jay. I have a, a half a cup of oatmeal, one cup of strawberries or blueberries. I know the caloric count right in here. Half a cup of oatmeal, 150 calories. I had a cup of water, zero calories. You know, one minute to make Quaker Instant Oats, done. And then my one cup of berries, 
80 calories. And I'm done. I have a pea shake too every day. I have a pea shake that's about 60 calories. So I already know. I mean, you, I mean, but if you automate, it's easy. And then one of my clients at the Steve Harvey show, I gave him some of the recipes from the book because we have some smoothies and some other things. He bought little mason jars, seven of them, and he made a big batch. He was like a Jamba Juice man. He made his big batch of smoothie material and poured it into his little his little mason jars, and then he had his refrigerator, and he took a picture, and he put it on Facebook and shared it with me, and I'm like, wow, I'm proud of you. You've automated, and he knows each one is 300 calories. Well, so also, that, does that help? Yeah, a little bit. Go I, ahead. I've also heard that if you, you don't have to automate every meal, but if you can automate one or two, then you're not keeping, you no, know, no. And, a lot and, of people and, like and, variety just at lunch, or. And I would, I would automate breakfast. That's the one, because we can control that one. You can control that. Lunch and dinner are harder, and that's why those apps help for those. But you know what? As much as it's hard when you eat out, I mean, Sam and I eat out all the time. We always eat for lunch, and we're so boring. You guys would probably love us or hate us. We have a, a, a chicken Caesar salad 80% of the time. I want to say maybe more. And, and I know, on average, they're very rich. The dressing, we go light on the dressing. We try to avoid croutons, but I like the croutons. It's okay. Cheese, Parmesan, all that, and I get a chicken breast. And I know that's a little more in calories. Usually for me, it's about 600 calories, but that's okay. And then the other thing of talking about calories, you guys have to customize your caloric value for yourself based on your age and your weight and your, and your sex. And I talk about that in Tiny and Full because a lot of times people are like, well, so what's your goal for the new year? I want to lose 10 pounds. Great. Well, how much are you eating? Oh, I don't know. How many, what's your goal for the day calorically? I, I don't know. I'm just not going to eat breakfast and lunch. And then they sit down and eat a Domino's pizza, and that's too much food at one time. And you can eat 6,000 calories. It's possible in one meal, in 10 minutes. I've seen people do 8,000 in 10 minutes. I mean, you, can really, you can't out-train a bad diet. That's all I can say. Do we have another question? Uh, right here. Back there, yeah. Um, nope. Right in the yep, front? there, yes. You have such a beautiful smile, I can't miss you. Your smile's nice too, but. <laughs> Hi, Jorge, thank you so much for being here this evening. My name is Danielle, and my question is, um, I think one of the things with eating healthy, particularly in like communities where there might be like, you know, like lower socioeconomic situations, things of that nature, that a lot of people say, or the first thing that they say is eating healthy is so expensive. Is there something that you can suggest or are there some like three things off the top of the, your head that you can suggest that are good foods to eat that um, are not super expensive? So maybe like a snack, something that's good for lunch and then a quick and easy dinner? I have a few. Do you, Jay? Oh, you're you first. You. No, no, no. Oh. Well, you know, people think I'm crazy, but I love fruit and it's so damn cheap. You can buy banana Trader Joe's for 19 cents, see? And that's good. And strawberries? I go to Trader Joe's or Whole Foods a lot. They're very inexpensive. So fruit, shockingly, it's inexpensive. They haven't jacked up the prices yet. So plant-based foods are the best. And, I, and then growing up in a Latin family, I know we didn't eat a lot of fresh fruits. I mean, we ate cheese and quesadillas, and oh, my favorite was nachos, and tortillas, y queso, and all the things my grandma would give me. And it's hard to say no to that. And, and shockingly, guess what is more expensive? The Doritos, the Coca-Colas, all the, the canned and processed foods because they have so many more chemicals and things. If you can eat one week, have your, your people eat one week from, from, they can use a bag maybe, like if it's a salad, but no boxes. Try to challenge them to eat a week without boxes. And you'll, they'll save probably like $100 to $200 in groceries, and more importantly, they're going to lose weight and they're going to feel better. So chicken, you know, I mean, you can grill it. It's not that hard. Salads, you can buy, I mean, go to, I love Costco. You can go to Costco, save money there. Whatever you want, go to places that have the things you like, but just go to the right areas. And actually, if you're on a budget and, you know, don't want to waste money, don't, they always say shop the periphery, right? Jay, the, do you remember that? Yeah. yeah, never go in the middle of the grocery store. <laughs> it's dangerous in there. <laughs> and expensive. So stay on the perimeter of the grocery store, right, Jay? Yeah. So we have time for one more question. Let's go right here in the front, I guess. Yeah. Hi. Um, Pleasure. Tell me your name. It's Liz Taylor. Liz. Welcome, Liz. Chic. Chic name. Very good. <laughs> anyway, um, I have a question. What would be a really good breakfast to eat for um, vegetarianism, like non-dairy? I'm a, I can't do dairy. Yeah, I don't like dairy either. Um, I'm having, trying to figure out good diet for vegetarianism that has protein and all the nutrients that you need. No, great question. Um, 
uh, Liz, uh, can I call you Liz? I love that. I haven't met Liz Taylor before. <laughs> I've never had the pleasure. But um, Liz, here's the thing. It's not hard. I would recommend, first you make a list of your favorite foods. What's, when, what's your favorite food in the morning back in the day? Eggs. All right. Well, that's, yeah. So I, I would do this. I would pick out meals. Like, I love the lady in the back when she shared this idea of how do you count calories? What do you eat? It's like, what do we do? What do, what do we eat? Because we got to know what to eat. Because everyone here eats every day, I hope. Right, guys? So I would focus in on first shopping in the per three of the grocery store. And then the foods that you like. Like, in the morning, like, I don't have a lot of time in the morning. Maybe on Saturday or Sunday, if we're not working or doing something active with the kids, we'll have time to make, like, French toast. But I would keep it simple. I think for you, I would suggest a, an energy bowl of food fruit like you do you have a blender or like a, a Nutribullet or do you have you do then use that and just get some frozen fruit that's what I eat at night just put it through there and then the best protein if you're a vegan in the morning guys I wouldn't recommend soy there's too much controversy Dr. Oz has pounded in my head too much this idea that soy and women's breast health is, is can, can be concerning so until they determine what's up there's only one uh, protein that I like in the morning and it's pea protein P-E-A you know yellow peas usually are the ones that they make and you get them at any health food store and I talked about it on Dr. Oz and there's generic versions there's fancy versions there's versions at Target and Costco wherever you go so if you can do pea protein in the morning and get at least 10 grams what pea protein does is it truly stops hunger for four hours. And that really, guys, I would end on this important note. I mean, not that we're ending yet, or maybe we are, but controlling your hunger and your appetite is everything. If you can control that, guys, you will lose weight and you'll be healthy. So in the morning, when you have your morning breakfast, Liz, I would, I would do something simple. Make sure you feel good afterwards. If you're still like, oh God, I didn't get enough food and I'm hungry, then you, you need to find something more filling. But fruit, again, or strawberries, I mean, it's a little cheat sheet here, but look, you see all these great little foods. So I would pr probably focus in on some plant-based food or something simple, you know, but, um, and protein, pea protein. And then at lunch and dinner, you can eat regular animal-based protein, whether it's a protein powder or hopefully real food, you know. Yeah. Hope that helps. Of course. Thanks, Liz. Jorge, we really